All right, so looking at four and five here, okay? Um, for reaction number four, I've got an element reacting with an element to form a compound. What kind of reaction is that? The synthesis reaction, okay, so we got that. Okay, if I'm writing that one out in words, I've got calcium plus oxygen, okay, gives me calcium oxide. Okay, so that's what it should look like written out in words. We have an ionic compound on the product side, so I just followed the rules for that. Okay, uh, I only have one thing that's out of balance. What is it? Oxygen. Oxygen. So I've got two in the reactants, only one in the products. What do I need to do? Two. Right, the lowest common multiple, which would be two, and I need to put a two in front of here, right? I can't just go put a two there or put a two, a little two, right? I can't draw the little twos in or I change the compound. So what I've done is change how much of it I have. Now I have two of them, okay? Um, does that throw my calcium out of balance? Yes. Can I fix it? Yes. Okay, by doing what? Adding Putting a two here, right? All right, now, uh, just so we know, it's always a good idea, and I have done a terrible job of modeling it over the last couple of days, but if something is a one, you should indicate that, okay? Um, the reason being is if this was a fill in the blank question on let's say like a unit exam or a quiz and you leave it the blank blank, I don't know whether you did it or not. I don't know whether you knew it was supposed to be a one and just didn't write it or whether you didn't know how to balance the reaction and left it blank. So write a one, if it's supposed to be a one, write a one in the blanks, okay? Or beside the compound here, which I will do a much better job of modeling today. Okay, how many people have done five? So, in number five, do I have the same kind of reaction? Yeah. Yeah, I have two elements reacting to form a compound, so, so still a synthesis reaction. All right, um, I have, what does AL stand for? Mm -hmm. Okay, plus oxygen. Okay, what's this stuff called? Aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. It's an ionic compound, so no prefixes. Do I need a Roman numeral? No. Aluminum is always a plus three. Okay, doesn't need a Roman numeral. All right, so now I've got it written out in words. Now I need to balance it. What should I balance first? Oxygen, Oxygen biggest number. Okay, and that's going to work most of the time. We'll do a few examples today where it doesn't, but it's not a big deal. You just pick something else and start with it. Okay, um, so I've got three in the products. I've got two in the reactants. Lowest common multiple? Okay, so I need to multiply this side by two and this side by three. Okay, now, does that throw my aluminum out? Yes. How many aluminum do I need to put over here? Four. Four. Okay, seems like you guys are getting this. How many people have done six? All right, I'm gonna give you a few more minutes on six and seven, okay, and then I'll do six and seven up here. All right, so for number six, I've got Bromine reacting with sodium chloride, so element reacting with an ionic compound produces a different ionic compound, different element. What are we looking at? Single replacement reaction. Okay, so if I'm writing that one out in words, I have bromine, okay, special element, plus sodium chloride. Okay, gives us sodium bromide. plus chlorine. Okay, that's what that'll look like. Um, what do I have to do now? Right, starts with B. Balance, yeah, I gotta balance the whole reaction now. Okay, uh, so I've got, uh, what should I start with? Bromine, chlorine? Yeah, bromine doesn't make a difference. I start with either one. Bromine's first, so I'll do it. Okay, so I got two bromines here, but I've only got one in the product. So what do I need to put right here? Okay, when I do that, does that give me two sodium as well? Yes. Okay, so I got to go back over here and correct the sodium. When I do that, it throws my chlorine off. Or does it? No. No, it finishes the reaction for me, and now I'm all done. Okay, everybody all right with that one? Uh, number seven. Element reacts with ionic compound. Same reaction? Yeah, another single replacement reaction. Okay, we've got copper. Now, 
Do I need a Roman numeral beside that? No. No, because right now it's not in a compound. So it doesn't give up any electrons now. It's how it should be by itself. Okay? So it doesn't need a Roman numeral when it's an element. It needs a Roman numeral when it's part of a compound. All right. So plus sodium chloride. going to give copper, which copper is it? Two. Copper 2 chloride. Plus sodium. Okay, what should I balance first? Chloride. Chloride is the only thing that's not balanced right now, right? It's, everything else is a 1. So there's two chlorines in the product, so I need a 2 here. Doing that throws off my sodium, so what needs to go in front of the sodium on the other side? Are we done then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look at me modeling the ones. Oh, I forgot a one there. Look at me not modeling the ones and then going back to fix it, making it look like it did. You don't need a one of them. I absolutely do. You do? Yeah, there's one bromine molecule there. Oh. Uh, okay, just like I need one here, there's one copper out. Okay. okay? All right, so yeah, it looks like we don't need it. And if you were writing out the whole reaction yourself, I would know if you didn't write a one that you didn't need a one. But if it's like the reaction's already there, you're filling in blanks, fill in blanks, put something in the blanks, okay? All right, let's try a few more of these before we look at word reactions here. Okay, now I will warn you that a couple of these are tricky balances. Okay. And some of them don't really fit with the strictest definition of what we've been talking about. So like, let's say number eight, for example, what kind of reaction is number eight? Synthesis. It is. It, it's not like the truest synthesis where it's like element plus element equals compound, but this is still two reactants going together to form a single product. That's still synthesizing one thing from two things. So it still qualifies as a synthesis reaction in the same way that number 11 is what kind of reaction? Decomposition. It's decomposition. It may not actually, it may not be a simple decomposition where it breaks down into simple elements, but it is still a decomposition reaction. One reactant is breaking down into two products. Okay? We'll even see some decomp reactions that break down into three products. Okay? Those happen. All right, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes on those. Same thing, type, balance, in words, okay? So first off, the reaction type for number eight is? It's, it's synthesis. It's two things combining to form one thing, okay? So it's still a synthesis reaction. It's just not the simplest type, okay? Um, but if we're going to write this out in words, what would SO2 be? Myonic or molecular? Be molecular. Okay, so I would follow my molecular rules. This would be sulfur dioxide, right? Because it's molecular, so I'd use prefixes for that one. Right? What's this stuff? Oxygen. Just oxygen. Yeah. Okay, what's this stuff? Sulfate. Sulfate is SO4, and it would only be part of an ion. Or it would only be part of a compound if it was an ion. Sulfur trioxide. Okay, this, I mean, it's a molecular compound, right? Okay, now what I often see people do with this one is they look on here at their, you know, their chart and they see SO3 here in their table of polyatomic ions. And so they'll often write sulfite, which, I mean, that makes sense. You see it there, you write its name. Here's why we can't do that. Sulfite is an ion. It's a charged particle. You only ever see it attached to a metal in an ionic compound. If you see SO3 and it's not attached to something, it's a molecular compound and it's sulfur trioxide. Okay? So you only use the ion names if they're in an ionic compound with something else. If they're just by themselves, then they're not a charged particle. Okay? They're a compound and we name them as such. So we kind of follow there. Okay. We're going over today a few reactions that are going to bring up a few little exception rules that we just have to be aware of when we're writing stuff. Okay. 
Now, the tricky part for this one is the balancing because oxygen is in every single part of this reaction. Okay. Um, so, how many oxygens are there in the reactants? Four. Four. Okay. And how many are there over here? Three. Three. Okay. Now, yeah, I mean, I can do the lowest common multiple thing because that's what we've been doing. And it'll work. Okay. But there'll be one thing we have to watch out for. So, if I want to make 12 oxygens in the products, what needs to go here? A four, because four times three is 12. Okay. Now, if I do that, that gives me four sulfurs. So I gotta go back over here and make sure I have four sulfurs. Yes? And that messes up. Okay. Well, it doesn't yet, right? I have 12 oxygens over here, right? Right here, I have eight, and I still need how many more? Four, right? To make 12, I need four more oxygens. Because four times three is 12, right? So we've got 12 on this side. Here I've got eight plus I need four, right? Okay, so if I put a two here, does that make 12 on both sides? Yes. Okay, this isn't right though. Could I what? Put a two in front of the SO3. Right, and have it be two, one, two, because I can reduce those numbers, can't I? Okay, and that happens, guys. Sometimes when we do lowest common multiple, it actually ends up that we didn't need to. We could actually go smaller than that. Okay, so just something to watch for is if when you've balanced a, a reaction, you notice that it can be reduced, you must. Okay, just like in a just in like in an ionic compound where if you can reduce it, you must. Same thing here. Okay, if I do this two one two, I have two sulfurs on both sides. I've got two times three is six oxygens. I have two times two is four plus two more is six. It's balanced. Okay, but it's lower terms. So I wouldn't leave it as four, two, four. I would lower it down to two, one, two. Okay? All right, how many people have done number nine? Okay, uh, I'm gonna give you a few more minutes and I'm gonna go over number nine and number 10. Okay? All right, in case you're done that far, I'll give you 11 and 12, but I'm going to do 9 and 10 here in about, let's say, 3, 4, 5 minutes, somewhere in there. Okay, let's have a look at number 9. What kind of reaction would number 9 be? Synthesis. It's a synthesis reaction. It doesn't. It's not element plus element equals compound, but it's still, okay, one thing plus another thing gives a single compound. Whenever you have a single compound as your product, you have synthesized something. Okay, so it's not a, a purely simple synthesis reaction, but it's still a synthesis reaction. All right, what would we call CO? Is it ionic or molecular? Molecular. Okay, and what would we call it? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. Yeah, that's that dangerous stuff. Okay, and it's reacting with oxygen. Okay, and that is giving us carbon dioxide. All right, so that's what that reaction would look like written out in words. Okay, just again, remember, if it's molecular, I follow the molecular rules, okay, and so on. Okay, do we have a similar thing going on to what we had going on in number eight? We do, right? Oxygen's in every single compound, uh, so the balancing can get a bit tricky. So here I'm going to show you a little trick, and we could have used it on the previous one as well, okay? On this side here, how many oxygen do I have? Three. Three. And on that side I have? Two. Okay. So this is what I call the odd-even problem. It's hard to balance a reaction if on one side the number is even, and on the other side it's odd. What's the best way to turn an odd number into an even number? Okay, could add one or times it by two. Okay, multiply any odd number by two, you get an even number. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. To get rid of this odd number of oxygens, I'm gonna put a two in front of it. Okay, now does that give me two carbons? Yes. Okay, so if I go over here, I gotta put a two here, right? Okay, but guess what? When you double an even number, it's still even. Okay, that's the beauty of the doubling rule. Okay, it always makes even numbers. All right. Now, on this side here, my carbons are balanced, and I have how many oxygens? Four. 
Do I have four oxygens over here? Yes. Then I'm done, right? Okay. If you have, and you're having trouble balancing, and you notice that you've got an odd number of something on one side and an even number on the other, double the odd number. Okay? So in this case, it was a 1. I made it a 2, and then everything worked out. Okay? Am I all right with that? Okay. How many people have done number 10? Okay. Um, I'll give you one more minute on number 10, then we're going to go over number 10. Okay. Is number 10 also a synthesis reaction? Yes. But it's the more like pure type, where it's element plus element equals compound. Easier to recognize okay, that that's a synthesis reaction. On a test or a quiz, I wouldn't give you ones that are, that are kind of off from the main pattern. You would always get main pattern ones. OK, uh, what would I call N2? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. That's, it's a special element, right? So it's just named. That's its element name. OK, same for this one? Oxygen. Oxygen. All right, they go together. They make what kind of compound? Dinitrogen monoxide because it's? Molecular, right? That's right. That's what I was leading for. But okay, it's two non-metals together. Okay, you guys gave me the right name anyway. All right, so dinitrogen, okay, monoxide for the name of that compound. All right, so now I got to balance this thing. Nitrogen's already balanced, so I don't need to do anything with that. But I'll probably mess it up. Okay. Oxygen is not. I got two in the reactants, one in the products. What needs to go in front of dinitrogen monoxide? A two. All right. When I do that, now I have how many nitrogen? Okay, so can I put a two here and fix it? What needs to go in front of the O2? One. Okay. All right. Um, let's look at number 11 here as well. So on number 11, I've got a single reactant, and then I have two products. What kind of reaction is that? Simple decomposition. This one's actually not simple, but I'm going to write it as simple decomp or just decomp. Okay, writing this out in words. Is this a molecular compound? Yes, it is. Nitrogen's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal. Okay, so this is going to be nitrogen dioxide. Okay, what's this stuff then? Nitrogen monoxide. that stuff? Oxygen, right. Okay. I need to balance this thing and once again I've got oxygen in every single thing in that compound and there's an odd number of oxygens in the products. So what should I start with? The two in front of the odd side. Right, a two in front of the odd side. This is the thing that's odd. Nitrogen monoxide is odd. Okay, and that's not an insult, it's got an odd number. Okay, so when I do this and put a two there, does that also give me two nitrogens? Yes. Okay, then I gotta go over here and fix that. Now, when I do that, that gives me four oxygens in the reactants. Do I have four oxygens in the products? Yes. I'm done then. Okay, because there's two times one is two, plus two more, okay, is four. Okay, just adding things together there, okay? Putting that two in front, that odd even solution, put a two in front of the odd, right, and it fixed it right away. All right, uh, give number 12 a try, and then we will, uh, I'll give you a short little break, and then we'll look at the word, going from word to formula type of reactions, okay? So in number 12, I've got an ionic compound reacting with another ionic compound producing two different ionic compounds. What kind of reaction is that? Double replacement reaction. Okay, so if I'm going to write this one out in words, okay, this stuff here is potassium fluoride. Okay, following those naming rules. Do I need a Roman numeral in that one? No. Nope. Okay, what's this stuff? Barium bromide. Okay, just following the ionic naming rules. I name the metal first, I name the non metal second. Okay, N's and I, Roman numerals for that one? Nope. Okay, which means I'm not going to need any Roman numerals on the other side either, right? Right. Okay, so this stuff is just going to be barium fluoride. 
Okay, and this stuff here is potassium bromide. Okay, what should I balance first? Yeah, I, I can do either fluorine or bromine, doesn't matter which one I do first in this one because it'll work out the same. Um, so on this side, on the reactant side, I have one fluorine. On the other side, I have two. So what do I need to put here? Okay, when I do that, it gives me two potassium. So what needs to go here? Okay, now that gives me two bromines. That's okay, there's, there's two over here. Uh, one barium, one barium. I think we're good okay, from there. All right, is this sort of making sense? Okay. The, the thing with reactions, guys, is it's a skill like any other skill. And the more you practice it, the better at it you're going to get. Okay. On that note, okay. pra practice quizzes 7, 8, and 9 are your best bets for preparing for this Friday's quiz. Right? Um, so make sure you're having a look at those. And I do want to give you a little bit of notice that if you are looking to come and see me this Thursday for help, I will not be here. Okay, this Thursday, I will have a sub in. Miss Vespa is going to be in for me on Thursday because I have to go get that shot in my back. Not this kind of shot, like a needle okay, in my back. So I can stay vertical and continue to teach you. Okay? Um, so I won't be here on Thursday, okay, but she will. But obviously, I won't be available for help because I won't be here. All right? So if you're doing those practice quizzes, see me today or tomorrow if you've got questions on those. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you a four minute break and then we're going to get back at the uh, word variety. So I give you the word reaction and you get through formulas and stuff. Um, but let's walk through this first one together. The steps are still very similar, it's just you don't get to start with the reaction written out in formula form. You have to build it. Okay, so it is a bit of an additional step and it does create some situations where you have to be mindful of is this ionic, I got a drop and swap, oh that one's molecular, I can just write the numbers, is this a special element, I got to write a special number, okay, those kind of things you have to be mindful of when you're going from word to formula, okay. So for this first one, I've got magnesium and chlorine produces magnesium chloride. So before I even decide, you know, what kind of reaction this is or anything, I want to write it out as it's worded here. So magnesium, okay, and that would mean plus chlorine. Is chlorine special? It is, okay? That's one of those ones I have to remember. Because if I don't write Cl2 here, I'm not going to get the reaction right. Okay, and it's going to produce magnesium chloride. So Mg and Cl now together in a compound. What kind of compound is that? What do I have to do with it? Drop and swap it. This is a minus one, this is a plus two, so I'm gonna have MgCl2 for the formula for magnesium chloride. All right, um, what kind of reaction is that? It's a synthesis reaction. Okay, so you'd get one mark for the reaction written out correctly in words, you get one mark for synthesis, and then I gotta balance it. Done. Okay, do I have to do anything with this one? No. no, I got one magnesium on both sides, I got one chlorine on both sides. Here's the thing. If you forget that this is a special element, you're gonna write a two in front of this. Reaction's gonna be wrong, balancing's gonna be wrong. You get one out of three if you realized it was a synthesis reaction. And remember to write it down. Okay, so that's the mindfulness level is way higher when I give you the reaction in words than when it's already written in formula form. You already know when I give it to you in formula form that the drops and swaps have been done, the special elements have been identified. You don't have to worry about those things. When it's in word form, you do. Do you have to swap and drop it if you know it's a special element? Because you know it has to stay. Oh, no, it doesn't have to stay. I do have to drop and swap because if this was uh, sodium instead of magnesium, Okay, so just like theoretically here, okay, if this was sodium instead, right, Na plus Cl2, well, now it's not, now it's, it doesn't stay as a 2. It's only a 2 when it's alone, okay? Special elements only have their special number when they're an element. Once they're in a compound, all bets are off. It's drop and swap or prefixes that determine their number then. Okay, so that's a good question because that, that comes up. Okay, all right. Um, I want to undo all that stuff I 
just did so that answer is right. Okay. Questions there? When you change the sodium, would you not try balancing it? Oh, I would have to rebalance. I didn't. I didn't rebalance the reaction there. You're totally right. Thank good eye. But yes, I would rebalance, and I would put a two in front of the sodium chloride and a two in front of the sodium in that situation. Okay. Dihydrogen monoxide. How many hydrogens? Two. two. How many oxygens? One. They could have just written water and saved us all a bunch of trouble, right? Okay. Um, gives off. So is there anything reacting with this? No, it's just breaking up. Okay, so hydrogen and oxygen. Anything wrong with what I did there? Yeah, they both need twos. They're both special elements. Decomp reactions are the worst for that. Okay, you got to know this is a decomposition reaction. I'm probably going to have at least one special element in there, if not both of them. All right, so this is going to be H2 and O2. Right? So now I know I've got the products right. I know it's a decomp reaction. All right. What do I have to do now? Balance it. Yeah, balance it by putting a two in front of here. Okay. And when I do that, I get four hydrogens. So what goes here? Two. Okay. Oxygens are okay? Yeah. Yep. All right. I probably should have had ones in front of everything on that one there. Okay. Um, is that making some sense? Okay. So these, they take a little bit longer because there's a bit more to do. Okay. All right, I'm going to put a few up here on the board. Okay, let's say two. All right, try those two and uh, let's see how they go and then we'll do a few more. All right, guys, let's have a look at number three here. So I've got aluminum. What would I write for that? AL. AL, yeah. Is that a special element? No. And oxygen, O2, special element. Okay, and it's going to produce aluminum oxide. Is that ionic or molecular? Okay, so that means I've got to drop and swap this thing. So that's a minus two. Aluminum is a plus three. Okay, so we drop and swap. The two is going to go here, and the three is going to go there. And now I know I've got that compound written correctly. Okay, so I've checked their special elements. I've dropped and swapped the um, the aluminum oxide. I should be ready to do what now? Balance. Balance it. What kind of reaction is it? It's a synthesis reaction. Okay. All right. Uh, which one I balance first? Oxygen. oxygen. Biggest number, right? Biggest number first. Okay. So there's three oxygens on this side, two on this side, lowest multiple, six. six. Okay. So what do I need to put in front of this compound? Okay. And what in front of the oxygen? Three. Okay. So now my oxygens are good. What do I need to put in front of the aluminum? A four. Okay, because two times two is four. Okay, questions on that one? All right, how many people have done four? Okay, let's look at four then. All right, so I got phosphorus. How would I write that? P4. P4, right, it's one of our special elements. Always got to be on the lookout for that. And oxygen, rarely does anyone get that one wrong because that's what you've always written for it. Okay, um, is going to produce. Phosphorus pentaoxide. Ionic or molecular? Ionic. Molecular. Phosphorus and oxygen are both nonmetals. And what was in the name? Penta, a prefix. Okay, so PO5. Okay, would be what our formula would look like there. What kind of reaction is that? Synthesis reaction. Okay, now this one here, okay, is going to be an example of. One of those rare times when the rule I told you doesn't work. Okay, the rule I told you was balance the biggest number first. Biggest number in this is five. five. Okay, so five oxygens on the in the products, two in the reactants. What balance is that? Ten. Ten. Okay, but if I put a two here to balance my oxygens, that doesn't give me enough phosphorus, does it? No. Okay, so this happens sometimes. I see that this is not going to work. I stop, and instead of starting with the biggest number, I start with the one other thing that was in this. I start with this, okay? Is that a really big deal? 
I just I knew I couldn't make it work, so I said, okay, fine, be that way. I'm gonna start with phosphorus, they like me better. Okay, so I got four on this side. What do I need to put in front of this? Four. Okay, how many oxygen does that give me? 20. 20. All right, so I gotta put a 10 here, a one there. Can't reduce that, right? I've already got a one in that reaction, so that's the lowest term, one, 10, four. Make it sense? So that, like, I hope you're seeing in some of these reactions just how many little nitpicky details there are, okay? And why you have to really be on the ball when you're doing reactions this way, okay? Because it's really easy to get nickel and dimed of marks as you go along because you forgot phosphorus was special, okay? Or something like that. So it's those little details that can get you in trouble. Okay, I'm going to put a few more up here that I want you to try and we'll go through them together. So let's say those four. Okay, give you a few minutes on those four. Alright, so on number five I have nitrogen trihydride, ionic or molecular? Molecular, okay, so how many nitrogens are there? One. How many hydrogens are there? Okay, and that's reacting with oxygen. What's that going to look like? O2. O2. Okay, and that's going to produce nitrogen. What's that going to look like? N2. That's one of the special ones. And this stuff called dihydrogen monoxide. That, I guess. Okay, they could have just said water, but whatever. What kind of reaction is that? It kind of looks like single replacement, except, is this ionic? No, it's actually not a reaction type that we can classify. Okay, it's not one of the five that we went over. Um, I would say it's probably some sort of replacement reaction, but not an ionic replacement reaction. Okay, so we've got this going on, okay? And um, what, we're, what are we gonna have to do next? Uh, how are we gonna balance this? Yeah, I would say hydrogen first. It's the biggest number, right? That's our rule, it works most of the time. All right, on this side I've got two hydrogens, and on this side I've got three, lowest multiple is six. six. Okay, so I'm gonna put a two here and a three there. My hydrogens are good. When I put a two here, that makes my nitrogen work. That's nice, okay? And on that side I've got three oxygens. Hmm, that's not good. Can't make that work, okay? Do I have this problem I described before of on one side I have an odd number, and on this side, I have an even number? Yes. What do I do with that three? Double it. Make it a? Six. Okay. So let's try that. Let's put this as a six, okay? Because this happens sometimes, okay? What I'm still doing, I'm still balancing the biggest number first. It just didn't work the first time around, okay? So I'm still balancing the hydrogen first. Now I've got 12. What needs to go here? Okay. Um, what needs to go in front of this? Two. Okay. And can I now put a number in front of the oxygen? Yeah. Which number? Now it works, right? Yeah. That's the lowest common, or that's the lowest terms as well. You can't reduce three, okay? So we're good there, right? Again, it's one of those reactions, and we put them in here on, on a day when we're kind of practicing to see, oh, what would I do in this situation? What I did, when I, when I followed the rule, it didn't work the first time. It's going to happen occasionally, okay? What do you do? Persevere, okay? Oh, I got that odd even problem. I'll just double the number. Okay? It's these little tricks and things that come up that we want to make sure we know how to do. All right, how many people have done six? Okay, let's look at six and then I'll give you some more time here. Okay, uh, what am I gonna write for carbon? Just C, yeah, carbon's just, I mean, it's just a non-metal. It's not a special one. Do I need to write a special thing for oxygen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. O2. Makes carbon dioxide, what does that look like? CO2. Boy, this has got to be about the easiest reaction ever. Okay, what kind of reaction is it? Synthesis. Synthesis, am I done? Yeah. yeah, it's already balanced. Don't expect one like that on your quiz. That's way too nice. I'm not that nice. All right, I'll give you a few minutes on seven and eight. If you're done seven and eight, okay, there is a nine there. You can give that a try. So on number seven, I've got calcium oxide, ionic or molecular? Ionic. ionic, okay, so I'm gonna write Ca, that's a two plus, oxygen, that's a minus two, so that's already good. Okay, and magnesium chloride, ionic or molecular? Ionic, ionic. okay, magnesium's a two plus, chlorine's a one minus, 
So MgCl2, okay? I'm just going through all those same steps we did when we did naming, okay? Just to make sure I get everything right here. Produces magnesium oxide, also an ionic compound, okay? That's a two plus, that's a two minus, so that compound is good the way I wrote it, okay? And calcium chloride, Ca, that's a two plus, chlorine's a one minus, so Ca. Cl2. All right, so now I'm sure I've got all the drops and swaps done correctly. What kind of reaction is that? Double replacement. All right, what should I balance first? Nothing, everything, it's already balanced, so put ones in front of everything, yeah. Now, if you had to write it all out like this yourself and you didn't write ones, that one I would understand. But like I said, if it's a fill in the blank question and the formulas are already, they're already in for you, I need the ones, okay? In that situation, absolutely I need the ones. Okay, how many people have done number eight? Okay, so on number eight, I have hydrogen iodide. Is that ionic or molecular? Mm, we're not as sure on that one. Hydrogen's first, so it's a? It's an ionic compound. Hydrogen first, it's a metal, okay? Hydrogen plus one, iodide minus one, okay? So that compound is okay, it's just high, okay? HI, right? Um, and it's reacting with oxygen. How do I write that? O2, okay? And that's gonna produce iodine. How do I write that? I2, right? It's a special element, and water. Okay, so this, this one here illustrates just how important remembering those rules are. It's, it's ionic if hydrogen is first, okay? <coughs> Special elements, we know oxygen, but iodine isn't one we come across a lot, okay? Have to remember that it's in group 17, it's a non-metal, so it's a two, okay? Now I've got that all written out, what kind of reaction is that? Synthesis. Single replacement, I got an ionic compound reacting with a, an element, and that element swapped out, okay, for the thing it was like, right? Iodine ended up alone, oxygen ended up with water, okay? So that would be a single replacement reaction. Um, now I gotta balance that thing, so start with uh, oxygen. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, um, so there's two oxygens in the reactants. What do I need here? Okay, that gives me four hydrogens, so I gotta go back over here. Now I've got four hydrogens, what do I do with my iodine? Right, put a two in front of the I2. Now I've got four ionides, okay? And a one, there, okay? How many people have done number nine? All right, I'll give you two more minutes on number nine, and then we'll go through that. Okay, so on number nine, I've got magnesium. So that would be, okay, is it special? No, okay, and it's with nitrogen, is that special? Yeah, yeah. okay, and that's gonna produce magnesium nitride, so Mg with N, what kind of compound is that? More ionic. Ionic, okay, so Mg is a two plus, nitrogen's a minus three, drop and swap, Mg three, N two, what kind of reaction is that? Synthesis, Synthesis reaction, yep. Yeah. All right, what should I balance first? Magnesium, because it's the only thing that needs balancing. It would seem that we are done. And the one there. Okay. All right. How are we feeling about that stuff? Okay. So guys, it, I mean, it's there's no quick thing on this. You just have to practice it. We're going to practice it a lot. Okay. Tomorrow, we'll probably start looking at how to predict the products a little bit. Okay. Moving towards that. Here's what you need to know about your quiz this week, okay? Your quiz will only have the most basic reaction stuff. So it'll have this kind of stuff where you're writing it out in words, balancing it, that kind of stuff. We're gonna talk about prediction tomorrow. There'll be one question that is prediction. That's it, the rest will all be naming. There's some solubility chart stuff, okay? And then there's some reaction stuff like we've been working on since Thursday of last week. All right, so all of, that's what will be on the quiz. Practice quizzes 7, 8, and 9 are your best bet for this week. Okay, check those ones out to help you practice. Come in for help. Okay, uh, reminder that I won't be here on Thursday, so if you're looking for help on Thursday, you're going to be so out of luck. Okay, on that one. So come see me before that, okay, so that you can get help if you need it. Uh, your labs, they should be marked 
this evening, okay, if you wanted to look for a mark, probably this evening is when you might see one, but we will be going through them in class tomorrow, okay? So uh, be ready for that. We will definitely be marked and entered okay, for class tomorrow for us to go over.